The first generation wireless, 1G, was voice. The second generation, 2G, allowed both talk and text. The third generation, 3G, the internet, in a limited way. And today's technology, 4G, completed that digital migration. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. The more I know, the more I realize how little I actually know. I have to tell people 5G is a killer. I'm Mark Steele. Anybody who hasn't heard me, I'm a weapon systems head up display expert, one of the leading experts in the world. I've actually brought cover in relation to this. And the reason I became an expert was because I invented them. What I'm going to say to you today, do not believe a single word I say. Not one. I want you to do your research. You'll find it absolutely terrifying. Pay attention to what is really going on. Pay attention to the Internet of Things, what it is, what it's doing, where it's going. Pay attention to the automation. Pay attention to the 5G towers that are still going up everywhere. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. And these effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. It's very important that people always look at both sides and as positive as what the right hand is offering you, always to pay attention to what the left hand is doing. Just because a lot of people think something is right doesn't make it right. Just because a lot of people think something is good doesn't mean that it's good. It will be impossible to exist in a city or to walk outside without being exposed. There's going to be a cell tower in front of every few houses. And this means that your personal choices, whether or not you personally use a cell phone or hold it 10 inches away from your head, that cannot escape you from your radiation exposure. This is not a random series of events that brought us to this point. Even when when you look at technology, civilization, industry, the rise of technology, none of this has been random. None of it has been simply a matter of course, simply men inventing things and connecting the dots and moving to the next practical thing. All of it has been done by design to lead us to a certain point. Not a lot of people can really see what is actually coming. It's about to become a very, very different world, folks. This is a very, very disruptive technology. Very disruptive in as much as it's going to disrupt the way we live our normal lives if we allow it to be rolled out and if we abide by the parameters that the government's putting in place with this technology. You know, and by around 2030, well, it's all going to be complete. Everyone's going to be in a complete lockdown. And the kids, as I've said so many times, the kids that are growing up through the system now will have no reference point for what the world once was. They'll have no reference point for what freedom even possibly looked like. They simply won't have the concept of it because it won't be anything they've ever experienced. And with 5G, I mean, what people need to understand with it is that it's all military grade technology. It's not just about monitoring. It's not just about social crediting. It's not just about surveillance. It's also about crowd control. It's about mood control, it's about emotional control. There are so many patents, so many US patents, so many DARPA patents that show the incredible amount of psychological manipulation you can do through electromagnetic radio waves. And not just psychological control, but also physical control. I mean, it's control at all levels that you can think of, folks. It's right across the spectrum. We've seen experiments with MIT where they've injected nanotechnology into rats and they've been able to switch the genes of the rats on and off using radio waves to operate the nanotechnology. You think about what's in the chemical spray that goes on in the sky, the nanotech in all the foods. I mean, we're being set up in a big way, ladies and gentlemen, and the manipulation that comes through this 5G system is profound. It's absolutely off the charts. It's way beyond what many people are considering. You have the capability of manipulating vast sections of population, targeted areas of population, or targeting people individually, targeting crops individually, biology individually. You think about the nanotech, it's in everything. So anything that the nanotech is in, 
can be manipulated through this 5G system. And the nanotech is in everything. They spray the nanotech in the skies. They put nanotech in the food. Even with what we flush down through our drains in our own homes, gets passed on down through the water system. So you see this in the food chain and this then nanotech in the food that we're eating and nanotech in the stuff that we're washing down the drains. And of course it ends up in the river system, it ends up in the fish, ends up in the algae, ends up in everything. With all of the stuff that they're feeding us about fast communications and good downloads and good connection speeds and all of this sort of stuff, that's the secondary application of all of it, or even the third application of all of it, because ultimately this is military grade technology and what it's about is control and ultimately it's a weapon system. You know, it's a surveillance system and a weapon system. You can have people under surveillance and then you can weaponize it and target certain individuals for elimination or whatever, heart attack, cancers, whatever you want to do to them. You just got to look at it, folks, and think, well, how much can you trust your government? Can you really trust these people? Look what they've done to the world so far, and that's who is rolling this system out, apparently for our benefit. When you look at the internet, you look at what it's become, it's becoming something that we never wanted. I mean, we wanted the internet there so we could have access to information, we could have fast communication with each other, but now it's becoming a digital barrier between us and reality. It's becoming something that we must interface with in order to access the real world around us. And all of our information is being removed from us and put onto what they're calling cloud computing now. They're even saying that soon you won't be able to get hard drives for your machines. You won't need hard drives because everything will be on the cloud. And all that means is that it doesn't exist anymore. It's up there in cyberspace and you don't actually have access to it on your own computer. So you can't have access to your own things. You've got to keep them on the cloud, which means you can be locked out of all of your stuff at any time. That's what it's about. I mean, I know people that have uploaded their photos to video host programs and then suddenly they get locked out and they need to verify who they are in order to access their own stuff. I mean, this is ridiculous, folks. They do all this sort of stuff and they say it's for your security. We're locking you out of the system because you've changed location for the day and so we don't think you are who you are. So we need access to all your devices and your cell phones and everything we can get to try to track you and triangulate you and get everything we can on you before we're going to let you have access to your own things again. That's what they do and they call it security. It's not keeping you safe. It's keeping tabs on you and making sure they can lock you out at any opportunity. And they're just kind of showing you that they can do that. And you're agreeing with it by going along with it. And when you've got kids that are growing up into this system and everything that they do is online, everything they know is online, all their bank accounts, their shopping, their friends, their Instagram, all their connections to everything, their electricity bill, it's all online. And even their car keys and their access to their house becomes digital then any threat of being locked out of that is going to stand as a major obstacle to these people ever thinking for themselves in their lives. You know, you imagine what it would be like. You start to question the government's actions. You start to speak out about vaccines. You start to speak out about anything that means something to you. And suddenly you find yourself locked out of the system. Suddenly you can't access your stuff because none of your stuff is here in the real world anymore. It's all been moved into the virtual world because that's what we're doing. We're removing our access to everything around us by creating this digital interface between us and the real world. And any threat of being locked out of that interface is going to be a totally complete system of absolute control. That's how you get people, folks. You get them addicted to the tech and you make the tech essential in their lives. And then any threat of being locked out of that tech makes these people walk between the lines very comfortably. And these people will do anything the powers that believe they be tell them to do. And that may seem like a bit of a drastic scenario to be outlining, but it's true, folks, because we won't have access to all the things that we normally do if we don't comply by the rules that the government tells us. Simply because we've transferred everything we normally do over into a virtual world. And the virtual world is not the real world. And when you transfer real life items into the virtual world, you lose them. This is what we're doing with everything. And it isn't even a matter of choice. We're just being led this way. And most people don't even notice what's happening. But it is happening. The internet is becoming the most important thing in the human experience because it controls everything else in the human experience. That's where the choice is. That's where the choice lies. The choice lies with us every day by what we do with that which is available to us and how we choose to operate in the real world. 
And as I've often said, folks, I don't own a credit card and I don't take a smartphone with me anywhere. When I go out, I don't do any of that stuff. So you don't need to have these devices. I can post all these clips to YouTube. I can watch all the other video clips that people post. I can do all these things. I can even access social media and do all those things all without having a smartphone. So we really need to think about the choices that we are making. The decision is with us and it's always been with us.